Brian Rothschild, currently with Parsons Bailey in Salt Lake, but the former co-chair of the Los Angeles Pro Bono Chapter. We're finding that the majority of LA practitioners were uh, working at large firms and therefore had difficulty taking pro bono clients on. And so we decided to partner with local uh, pro bono public interest law firms, Betsetic and Public Council of Los Angeles. This expanded the pool of available attorneys to service pro bono clients. It enables us to have expertise in areas in which we may not be, a, be comfortable or familiar with. We have, of course, a lot more call for family law, bankruptcy, landlord-tenant, and for lawyers who don't, uh, don't practice in those areas traditionally, they may feel uncomfortable to go in and start uh, dealing with one of those types of matters. They will be able to lend you their expertise and their, uh, uh, the level of comfort and the resources that they have allowing you to serve your clients even better and become familiar with these areas in which we have more call for pro bono services. In addition, we decided that it would be good to try and provide useful service to uh, members of the church who were in need, who were referred, uh, worthy members who were referred by the uh, stake presidencies or by the bishoprics, and we specified the criteria that would enable us to serve. I was uh, at a larger firm at the time in Los Angeles and couldn't take on most referrals from the J. Rubin Clark Law Society until we began referring through Betzetic and Public Council. There was a uh, bishop who called up and said there was a uh, member who uh, had filed a bankruptcy case but that a creditor had filed a complaint objecting to her discharge in bankruptcy. Uh, I do bankruptcy practice, though consumer bankruptcy is not my forte, but I definitely could wade my way through it, and I couldn't take the case in, unless uh, she became a public counsel or Betsetic client. We put her through the Betsetic retention process, she qualified, and I was able to immediately pick her up and show up in court and become her counsel of record. Uh, successful actually in defending the non-discharge complaint. A short time later we settled the matter for a very very small amount and the client was able to move forward with a fresh start as was intended by the bankruptcy that she filed. And it was a wonderful I think uh, example of a matter that we would not have been able to handle and uh, I certainly could not have done it without a protracted process. And, uh, one of the great things about pro bono is I went uh, to court. I was uh, known to the judge. She said, hi Brian, how are you? And she knew who I was, which was a, a n nice little uh, perk of doing pro bono in front of judges to get to uh, get known for having done something uh, for which obviously I wasn't being paid. The system is not that difficult to implement. If, if you want to provide wonderful public service opportunities, uh, I think the first thing we can do is look to our membership. There are people who uh, who, of course, uh, just like any other need, uh, have uh, needs for legal services, and their primary point of contact is usually the bishop. And the bishop, therefore, can help you find uh, worthy pro bono opportunities. And if you are uh, uh, out there in the community and able to make contacts with other public service and public interest law firms uh, or other service organizations, that those are also wonderful sources for helping you uh, have expertise and uh, helping you to, uh, uh, to make connections and find ways to do service that you might not otherwise be able to do. Uh, I believe that from 2011 and 2012 we placed and successfully managed 15 matters. We also were able to uh, refer a lot of needs to other resources either because they were uh, the, the uh, attorneys were outside of the, or, I'm sorry, the clients were outside of the income uh, requirements for for pro bono services at Betzedek and at Public Council, or we were able to help them in, in ways that uh, were non-legal ways and provide service uh, in that way. I believe that we have two reasons that we as attorneys and members of the church should be involved, and it comes from, one, we are attorneys, and I think we've complicated the legal system to a certain degree, to such a degree that individuals who don't have legal training, and sometimes individuals with legal training, can't manage it. It's a very uh, 
It's a very unfriendly system for people who are not attorneys. And we make our living, I think, as a result of the complexity, and uh, we benefit from that. As a result, I think we also uh, pull a responsibility to help those who can't afford our legal services to help navigate uh, them through the difficult uh, legal system. But also, as members of the church, we are to provide compassionate service. And legal services are a, a type of service which we can provide that other people can't, and it's a type of service that, that most people can't provide for themselves. I believe that as members of the church, we should provide this sort of service. It, it helps us go beyond ourselves and think outside of ourselves and gives us a, a sense of, the, of, of what regular people deal with all day and, and elements and people that we wouldn't come into contact with. And it should help keep us grounded and understanding of the world in which we live and the members who are around us.